So this is part of a long joint work with, uh, with Gaber. And it's, it will be about a certain generalization of Scholz's perfectoid rings and perfectoid uh, spaces, <coughs> and of um, a certain version of uh, the almost purity theorem that has actually motivated this generalization. <coughs> so let me start from the almost purity side. Um, so I will just remind a few things about almost string theory that have been hinted at in the previous talk, so I will just sketch some definitions rather quickly. Uh, so, uh, as Andre said, we always start with a basic setup consisting of a ring, and um, an ideal such that m is equal to n squared. This is the minimal assumptions that one needs for certain results. One needs more, but this is the minimal setup. OK, then almost in theory, just a way of systematically neglecting m torsion in uh, a modules and a algebras. So to see uh, the kind of notions that one introduces uh, in practice, uh, let me just give you a sample. So if uh, B prime is a map of A algebras, we say that um, maybe call it F. F is almost flat if M kills the functor tor 1 B, B prime. then similarly we say that F is almost projective if M kills the relevant X1 B factor. Mm. Uh, then uh, F is almost unramified <coughs> if the, uh, the multiplication map, uh, so the the diagonal in geometric terms from B prime and tensor. This if it is almost projective in the previous sense. Uh, F is almost dull, dull if it is both almost flat and almost projective. OK, then also uh, almost unramified, yes. Yes. Uh, one also has several <coughs> kinds of uh, almost finiteness conditions. Maybe I will just skip them, but I will just mention them almost finiteness. And also almost finite presentation. OK, so one good thing about these, uh, these conditions is that uh, they localize well, or they globalize well, maybe. They globalize. Easily to scheme. Uh, so, for instance, if you have x in a scheme, and if you have a, a quasi coherent uh, x algebra, then uh, you will say that a is almost total. 
if uh, you have the same property. For all, you open a fine. Okay, so this is uh, the natural. Okay, um, then the first important definition for almost purity is the following. So suppose you have an A scheme X, Z inside X a closed subscheme. And then we say that x, z is an almost pure pair. If the functor so you have an obvious restriction functor from almost at all Oh, x algebras. Well, with uh, some obvious, well, some needed, uh, almost finitely <laughs> presented condition. So you're going to restrict this to almost et al. Oh, x minus z algebra with the same. Presented condition. If this is an equivalence, um, yeah. So, to be more precise, uh, one has to uh, consider, as 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 also Andre uh, already mentioned, you have to work systematically inside the localized category to make good definitions. So here, you uh, implicitly, I, I want to invert uh, the almost isomorphism. So. Okay, and then this is the right definition. Okay, and then um, with this def with this notion, what is the almost purity theorem? It will be an assertion that uh, a cert certain pairs are almost pure, of course. Mm -hmm. And Faltings proves proved the first important version of this theorem. So it's called Faltings almost purity. And uh, what does it say? So consider V uh, DVR with perfect residue field. Of mixed characteristic. Uh, pick a uniformizer. And then the relevant A here will be obtained by adding all the roots, p power roots <coughs> of the uniformizer. And the relevant M is just the ideal of all roots, of, generated by all the roots of p. Huh? So then um, consider. Rm via logsmos D algebra. For the log structure One to P. Hmm. So what does it mean? So this means that M is a saturated submodule 
Sharmonoid, sorry. Inside some Z N. Okay. And um, have a, we have a map. We actually, we have maps. of monoids. This is just the structure map of the V algebra R. And so the condition that you want is the co-kernel of the induced map on groups. Has no g -tosh. Has no pitosh. Uh, yeah, in inject here. Saturate. Yeah. And locally. On the etal topology, one has that on. It has no p has no p torsion. Thank you. Has no p torsion. Okay. Um, then set x in the spec of R, read, so you add all the roots of the elements of M, and Z is just uh, uh, the special follicle of fiber. Mm -hmm. And then mm, the theorem in question is just that uh, x, z is an almost pure pair. So maybe the Faltings didn't exactly prove precisely this version. Maybe it had uh, some other condition. But this is, this is certainly something that one can prove with the methods that Faltings introduced in his paper. So uh, these uh, ideas of... Uh, um, looking at the local cohomology and the action of Frobenius on it. And okay. Um, so one little remark is that it is it is often more often stated mm -hmm. by starting with uh, so equivalently equivalent version. So start with x zero which is just the spec of the original R, and the Z0, which is just the, the closed fiber, and the finite cover. <coughs> um, which is a tal outside. at zero. And then uh, what you do is you take the pullback to x, and then you normalize. And this is almost et al. over x. This is more in the style of all things, probably. So in this, if you write it in this way, it looks more like a, a version of a, a kind of widely ramified version of a, um, a Bianca's lemma, hmm? where you don't have any tameness assumption. Why, why not? Uh, what did I? Oof. Uh, why, why, why zero? Yes. Why zero? Yes. It's more well, like, so this, you know, I got. 
but also a Bianca. Both. I didn't think about it as a Bianca. I did. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, after Scholz's work, uh, we have now much more general versions of uh, uh, almost purity, of course. Uh, but uh, it's not, you cannot really say that then these versions or versions like these are obsolete because for many applications, <laughs> uh, one still needs a kind of a, a <coughs> coordinate descriptions of x uh, in, in this in the style. So the, the point is that uh, for, for the application to periodic theory, uh, one, uh, one basic step is uh, to relate a tal cohomology to, Gal to Galois cohomology, and then uh, uh, one starts with a given x. One has here some x tilde, which will be the universal covering, uh, which is a tal uh, in, in, in the generic fiber. And in the middle, you have this, uh, that maybe one could call x infinity, I don't know here x infinity here, um, which is, well, you have maybe x here, and then here you have x, b. And, um, and then one wants to compute Galois cohomology of certain modules relative to this group, and one uses the rest spectral sequence to reduce to a computation of uh, involving this group and this subgroup. Now with the almost purity theorem, you will see that the, the spectral sequence almost degenerates, so that's good enough. So you are left with computing this uh, group cohomology. But in order to make these calculations, you have to know, you have to be able to compute this delta. And this is what this kind of uh, log, log geometric uh, condition give you because basically tell you that you can compute this by taking the periodic completion of, of m. Modulo the n. Ah, we oui, yes. Something like this. Mm -hmm. Group, 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 group. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, um, yes. So this was um, um, an, an apology for why I am. I want to talk about uh, towers of low regular rings. And, and another reason is that uh, if you think in terms of uh, um, wild version of a Bianca's lemma, then uh, one remembers that the usual Bianca's lemma is not just for smooth schemes over a certain base, but for general regular schemes. So it is natural to look for a version of this purity, if you want, or a Bianca's lemma. In, in the context of log regular rather than regular schemes. Okay, um, so this is what we try to do. We try to generalize this almost purity to towers of uh, log regular rings. So just uh, let me remind you what are these classes of rings. So you have a an equivalent characterization, maybe not just not maybe not the definition, but an equivalent characterization of what is a log regular ring. Uh, so these are notions introduced by Cat, of course. So what is this? Uh, so it is the data of a ring R, which is. Um, which contains R0, M0, um, which is a complete regular local ring. Uh, 
plus the data of a submonoid which is saturated. Inside Z to the R, which can assume it is sharp. And also, it includes the data of a map of monoids. Uh, inducing a surjection, surjective ringomorphism. it here. Mm. Ah, but there is a perfect. <coughs> Such that. So you have two cases for completeness, though we are only interested really in one case. But so if R contains a field, then phi is just an item, and otherwise, curvy is principal and generated by a certain power series whose was a constant term with the constant term theta zero, which is in M zero and not in M zero square. Okay, so this is what for us is not regular ring here. Completion at the beginning Complete regular Ah, uh, complete. Maybe. Yeah. Also complete. So let's put everywhere. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. The structural theorem of cut, I mean, it is, yeah. the definition is... Uh, the definition is different. The definition yes. is different, and also, of course, it depends if you have the risk of a car of such. Yeah. So, the, usually, they just the coin rings and all the rest of the red. But anyway, you can use regular. Mm. Yeah. It's a sufficient condition. And is it a condition on a ring, or is it a condition on a log ring? Log ring. On, on the log. It, 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 it seems like a condition on a ring. Yeah. Because the P doesn't seem to be have any interaction with some kind of fixed log structure on R. Ah, you, you um, yeah, maybe I it was not properly for me. Okay, so maybe one should consider the pair R comma P. Actually the triple R comma P comma beta. Yeah, yeah. So P is a chart. You have a chart. So all so yes. So uh, a sharp chart and so on and uh, yeah well probably most of the people in the audience uh, know these things better than me so I don't have to make too many efforts to be very precise <laughs> 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 so uh, now let MP V P minus zero, so this is the maximal ideal of, of P. <laughs> then as a consequence of these conditions, A R divided and P R is regular local. 
And uh, for, for the theorem that I want to state, I need another assumption. We assume um, the residue field than zero and B the Frobenius is a finite map okay then um, B implies that if you look at the uh, absolute differentials and um, tensor with this uh, UPKA, this is a finite dimensional uh, KA, KA vector space. Okay, so. supposed to do like this. Okay, now the log regular tower that we replace Falting's tower. <coughs> so pick as a sequence F one F R of elements of R whose differentials gives the basis of this you know you can do it with finite many so then uh, uh, you get an induced map down to the power this is r mal r times p Um, so it's such that if you embed 0 times p here, you, you have to previous map beta. And uh, here you have E1, ER, the basis of NR, and you send them to F1, FR. And then here is the tower, where it's just the natural you just add the roots. You also need, so this will be the ring, uh, and then you need a normal structure. So, um, now. So this assumes for simplicity the differentials are enough, it is not true for when P is part of the system of parameters and you have to use the modified differential. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah or, okay, yeah. Uh, Yes, there are some tricky things that I swept under the rug because I don't even remember all this. So, 
Um, beta defines a log structure p tilde on x0 respect r and the locus of triviality so just maybe x p tilde uh, triv uh, the locus of triviality of the uh, log structure is a uh, <coughs> finite union of irreducible divisors D1, D, uh, well, it's N, where N, oh, I use the same letter, I should not have, so let's say DN here, uh, so as usual, these admit a combinatorial description in terms of the phase, uh, ah, and the phase could be, so it's not even that one, is. It, it, yeah, there could be many phases, so there could be many such divisors, it's a bit complicated, but, so, um, the complement of this. The complement of this. So this is x minus this equal. And uh, then a, um, so a log stratum. So the log strata. are the finite intersections of some of these. Hmm? So each of these intersection is what we call a log strat. Now, consider inside the spectrum of R infinity, X infinity, a closed subset of the form. We just uh, x infinity, so something on in, on the p locus union y prime, where y prime is the preimage of some log stratum. Finite union the Y we have in general possible subset of this okay. Of the diagram of the okay, so yeah. Yes, you could even this already. Okay, then uh, let I, in, I infinity be uh, the ideal of this I y inside R infinity. And then one thing that one can check is that, well, of course it is radical ideal by definition, but uh, it satisfies our minimal condition, so it is equal to its square. 
And then here you have the basic setup that we want. Okay, then theorem is <coughs> take z inside of y, any constructible. Closed subset then this is almost pure. Of course relative to this um, almost structure. So notice that uh, this is uh, uh, an almost structure that is very far from what Andre called the evaluative type. Eh? So it's not at all, um, not even a, an inductive limit of principal ideals in general. In general. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is what I wanted to say about just the statement of the tier, to put it on the wall. Constructible. Const uh, well, it's give it cut by finitely many equations. Yeah, but the limit argument you will not need it. Okay. okay. Yes. Also, yeah, we we have all the kind of yoga over almost pure pairs, so you can massage all sorts of pairs to produce new pairs. And in particular, you can take limits of uh, such pairs, and then you can remove <laughs> this condition if you want. But, but of course, anyway, constructible just cut by finitely many. So, um, yeah, so this uh, was the story, um, this was the situation before the uh, Hurricane Scholz uh, arrived. And so it completely uh, changed the, the landscape, and in particular uh, with the techniques that introduced um, his more general almost purity theorem. Uh, included some previous versions of almost purity that, that we had worked out generalizing the method of faultings. So it included all the versions of almost purity except for this one. This one is not immediately um, a consequence of the, the, the perfectoid almost purity that you have. So it was natural for us to try to find a more general theory of uh, almost rings that included all what Scholze did and that would apply to deduce also this kind of almost purity. And this is <coughs> what we did. And this is the, the subject of the second part of my talk. So, uh, perfectoid. <laughs> rings so it's it's easy to see what is a, a perfectoid ring in in our generalized sense uh, in positive characteristic so it's just part a of the definition if you want so let B topological F P algebra if I I is a perfect ring, so Frobenius is an isomorphism, and the topology is complete. T is the topology. Yes, T is the topology. Separated. And um, adic for a finite gener for an ideal of finite type. Okay, 
then there is actually also a, an official definition of a, um, perfectoid in mixed characteristic, but instead of giving the official definition, which is uh, technical and not very illuminating, I give an equivalent characterization. Which actually, I, at this point, if you paid attention, close attention to the previous lecture, you could even maybe uh, guess. So, um, so a general perfectoid ring, so not necessarily in, in positive characteristic. is a topological ring of the form where <coughs> where E is a perfectoid P algebra and A, so W is the width vectors. So the A is a distinguished width vectors. So this means that the first coordinate is topologically important. is invertible and the topology is the quotient topology So um, I call that for every ring A, we have uh, a natural map well, for every no, for every complete ring. So for instance, so you anyway, for, for A, like in my definition, you have certainly a, compl a, a map like this, um, a continuous map for the topologies, natural topology, where E is what now is called the tilt, which is of course a construction due to Fontaine originally, as the inverse limit. With Frobenius. And then uh, what we show that if A is perfectoid, then This is perfectoid. And theta is surjective. And the kernel theta is generated by a distinguished idea. Uh, is a distinguished element generated by some distinguished element.
What do you mean by EOA? Um, where, where do I write E of A? Uh, e, this one, this one. Uh, is the inverse limit of A mod. Too many. And well, no, it's not the definition. Is so it means that you can recover a if you know it is of this form for some e, then you don't actually have a choice for e. It's this is what it is, and uh, and in this way you deduce that you get tilting equivalences. Mm. So. Then uh, consider the category E of, of all pairs. <coughs> e, uh, comma, I, where E, perfectoid over FP. And I, an ideal which is distinguished, so generated by a distinguished element. And with obvious maps, so so these are just the continuous maps. of rings such that uh, wf of i is contained in e prime and then it will actually be equal to e prime um, how do i call this category well, let's call it e and then let also b be the category of all perfectoid rings And then what I say here with this remark is that I have a, a well-defined functor. Well, first of all, there is the, uh, maybe, the maybe I describe for the until. So there is a functor from E to P. Which associates to E comma I the quotient. And then you have an inverse, which, well, what it, it does exactly what I say here. So I, um, I take the pair given by, uh, for, for each A, uh, perfectoid, I take the pair given to uh, the, the construction E of the Fontaine, and the kernel, the kernel, which is a distinguished ideal. Distinguished ideal, what does it It is generated by a distinguished element. Mm. So, and then uh, these two functors uh, we prove, with, it's mm, rather easy to deduce from this kind of remark that they are equivalences. They are quasi inverse of each other, yeah. Mutually quasi inverse to each other, usually quasi inverse equivalence. Okay. Um, well, I had uh, some examples of concrete calculations, but maybe I just skip. Um, so this, uh, as a special case, it includes uh, the category uh, introduced by Scholz. Eh? Uh, notice also that uh, if you fix a, um, an, a perfectoid, then uh, for every map A to B uh, continuous, hmm? 
The induced map. Ah, uh, yeah. So if you have uh, any map of continuum of, um, of so both perfectoids, hmm? and then uh, uh, the induced map. sense distinguished to distinguished. Um, and so this means that the, um, the distinguished ideal is already determined by the one given by A, if you don't know what it, this says. So you get in particular that the tilting equivalent, the general tilting equivalence that we have here restricts to an equivalence between A perfectoid and E of A perfectoid. Hmm? So if you fix A, you don't need to put um, the, the data, the datum of I in the picture. So this resembles more uh, the the kind of equivalence that Schultz has. OK, so then uh, what we did with the, the relation between the distinguished and the distinguished Yes, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Precisely? It's the same thing. Are we talking about perfect ring? Something is distinguished only in the first component. Yeah. So, perfect ring in mixed characteristic can be reduced to perfect ring in characteristic P. That's what you say. The last thing. Ah, A perfectoids are equivalent to E perfectoids for every given A. But if you want a general situation, you have to put also the datum of I. So you have families of. Uh, if you want, if you, um, I don't know. <laughs> so I if, you f if you have a given perfectoid algebra and characteristic P, then there is not just a single way of untilt it. There is a whole family of kind of deformations. Of, uh, so it's, it's, if the parameter is given by I. Maybe param two parameters that are close give the same, uh, the same untilt, but uh, um, in general, they are different. Perfect within characteristic P to perfect within mixed characteristic. Yeah, yeah. The, the I, you need you need the I. You need to keep the I in the picture to to do that. But if you fix an A, you have already an I, and and this is the only one you can use. Okay. So then, of course, we studied the, this category of uh, perfectoid rings, and we found uh, that it has many interesting properties. For instance, you have uh, tensor products, completed tensor products, and other type of operations you can do. But I'll just skip. I just mentioned an important criterion. So proposition. Suppose you have a complete separator topological ring with tau, the iadic topology, where I is an ideal generated by a regular sequence. Uh, P is in this uh, kind of modified power.
the idea generated by this. Then C, the Frobenius of A mod P induces an ison. And then the conclusion is that A then is perfectoid. We not only have perfectoid rings, uh, there is also um, the associated notion of perfectoid space. Mm? So, uh, these, these perfectoid rings are all uh, f-adic rings or Huber rings, and now they are more called, called Huber rings. So to every A perfectoid, one can associate the uh, topological space of all continuous valuation. Okay. And it's interesting subspace if you fix a so-called ring of uh, uh, integral elements uh, inside A. Uh, so maybe I'll not put too many details. But anyway, we have uh, a tilting uh, homeomorphism between uh, Cont A and cont E over A. Uh, how does it go? So if you have uh, the equivalence class of evaluation, you associate to it the map defined in this way. So you have E A modulo P. Then you have the Teichmüller. You go to. Then you map back to A by theta, and here you put v. So this is the tilt of uh, v. I don't know, v, whatever. Hmm? So with this operation, you get a homeomorphism. And um, then uh, Huber associates to every um, space of this type or in generalization, the uh, the S addict spectrum will appear certain pre-sheaves. And just like in Schultz's theory, these pre-sheaves turned out to be sheaves of topological spaces, uh, which is a highly non-trivial fact. Uh, and um, the also the, the, the Czech cohomology for all finite coverings by rational subsets is trivial in higher degrees. And you have similar results for the uh, sub, sub shift of integral elements inside. Oh, just like in Schultz's theory. Hmm? Um, then maybe let, let just me conclude with stating uh, our generalized version of almost purity for perfectoid rings of our generalized type. Uh, so, <coughs> suppose you have a tau which is perfectoid for uh, some eadic topology. Hmm? I, of course, is an ideally. And then let x speak of a, z Some closed subset 
yeah, here I don't even need to say constructible, just like before I, I the proof go by reduction to constructible case, but let's throw in this generality. Then set M the ideal of Z inside A. And uh, then there are two assertions. M is equal to N square. And B, XZ is almost pure. For the A M structure, A M A almost structure. Okay, so then. Um, no, 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 no. Both are true. Both are true. Um, also, this you can generalize by putting formally perfect toy <coughs> here, which just means uh, it is not necessarily complete, but it is becomes perfect toy after you complete it iadically. And once you put formally perfect toy in here, you can apply it to the log regular tower that I had at the beginning, because this will be an example precisely of uh, one of these formally perfectoid rings. So, uh, ah, and how you check it, uh, I think you want to use criterion of this type. Huh? So, oh, and, and a lot of work is not, is not so, but this is the, maybe the, the main ingredient. So, and in this way you prove uh, and you give a different proof of this theorem that we had already proven with the methods of faultings, but now it is part of a general uh, almost perfectoid, uh, this general perfectoid picture that you have now. Yeah, I wanted to say maybe some other things, but I will stop here. So. Questions for the speaker? What is theta here in this diagram? Ah, theta is, I said that every time that you have a complete topological ring of, of this kind of this kind of type like and perfect okay. there is always such a map okay. because it's a universal property of the width rings. Okay, okay. Continuous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some conditions. Uh, Uh, well, uh, yeah, you, you, just like uh, Scholz uh, generalized, uh, I mean, w once you have uh, this kind of uh, uh, tilting equivalence, then, uh, of course, even without the tilting equivalence, I can just decide to patch, to, to, to form general perfectoid rings by by patching together uh, uh, addic spaces. No, not variance, special case. They are always special case. Uber contains everything. Yeah, because uh, he has done things without any sanction. Just you need to verify that they are addic spaces, that is that the pre-sheaf is a sheaf. So the theorem, these kind of theorems just say that certain data are addic spaces. So you have all the theory of Huber already. You have the globalization because it's a special case of Huber theory. Uh, but then, of course, you are interested in knowing whether there is a, um, a tilting for this. And, but you have it already on, on this uh, affine pieces, so you can piece together things. And if you want, you can do it. We didn't do it explicitly because we went in some other direction. But <laughs> well, so if I understand it right, so you generalize both uh, your log towers and somehow and the um, previous work. Yeah? But in the, in the last formulation, the log structure totally disappear. No, no. Uh, then uh, I, 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 I don't see any log no, structure. Yeah, no, no. Yes, of course. So now, now we have a general notion of perfectoid uh, rings. And as a special case, as an example of uh, such perfectoid rings, we can take the previous log regular tower 
With the periodic topology. With the periodic topology, and you complete. Well, if you don't complete, it's only all, all no, performance. No, I mean, you have the notion of log ring. You might have the notion of log perfect or it ring. Ah, <laughs> log perfect or it ring. <laughs> you extract roots of the monoid. Yes, and, and ask for uh, <laughs> log <laughs> atoll maps. Log atoll maps. Ula, ah, um, <laughs> we never. Okay. No, 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 no. First, the tal, the tal maps are delicate to define yeah. because of the non materiality So there is this. Uh, but you can do it. Yes, no, no, but there is this thing of Schultz about. So you use uh, uh, rational domains in finite tal and composition of those, but uh, we also have kind of non analytic locus in some definition of it. So it's more delicate to. Uh, no, no, it yeah, anyway, this is uh, not uh, <coughs> in the talk. So I also want to remark that the purity theorem is said for the log regular case, mm -hmm. there is a part of the branch locus not in the characteristic P. And so this is part of the original statement which motivated by the cases considered by Faltings where <coughs> you had some kind of normal crossing device. Mm -hmm. or so the, the idea is that this is handled by applying usual by Anker's lemma argument mm -hmm. plus the and so and so we needed some argument with some prime to p group and uh, the anyway so uh, also I want to ah, and this survives also in this yeah so anyway you stated the purity theorem the log regular case allowing branch locus part of the branch locus right right to be a, a, a union of yes the yes and yes so, so these arguments still is still needed yeah. even in the but this you get rid of by by, by applying the usual by Anker's lemma in characteristic zero and applying some work that we did before about finite abelian P groups, it's not, uh, I mean, finite abelian prime to P groups. Uh, is also, I wonder, uh, maybe this is a question to. Uh, <laughs> you can answer yourself. <laughs> so the, the definition in prism theory was, uh, that was said in the previous talk, was in some previous talk, was that you consider distinguished elements are those which are sent by delta to so units. units. Yes, and yeah. here okay. the, so the here it is true. A1 it is, is unit. Yeah. It is true that A1 is a unit, but we also yes. have the condition that A0 is topologically important. Yes. So I don't see how, how this comes about from no. the... Ah. Uh, the maybe it's a question to... <laughs> <laughs> okay, because... So you think that they are slightly more general? Well, I don't know, I will ask... Uh, <laughs> I don't see the. Yeah. Don't okay, see so I think I think we should probably delay the further questions and discussion until later because there's an RER problem still. So uh, mm -hmm. it might take us longer to get back. Mm -hmm. So let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>